Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of What Does Reduced Recoil Variance Scaler Even Mean? The video. Today we're talking about the sandbox and some major changes coming to the game in Season 17, including, but not limited to, weapon balancing across all archetypes, flinch resistance, airborne effectiveness, and exotics. The meat of the video is in the commentary, so if you just want to listen, feel free. The video is just literally whatever I could scrape together. I'm also going to be trying to speed things along and only hit the main points of things that are happening, less specific numbers and all that, unless they are very significant. Glaives are up first. The biggest thing here in my eyes is related to weapon damage buffs. The reason why weapon damage buffs are not applying to glaive melees is partly because of PvP, allowing for two-hit melee kills, which Bungie does not want. They would prefer to increase the base damage to make damage perks not feel as needed, which is something that they are doing. Bungie's intents are the following. Glaive basic melee should activate perks that trigger off of base melee damage or kills, should benefit from melee damage buffs like Worm God or Winter's Guile, found that one pretty interesting, and projectiles should benefit from weapon damage buffs. Glaive melees should not activate on perks that trigger on a powered melee kill or damage, and that's fine, and should not benefit from weapon damage buffs. For example, Grave Robber ammo restoration on a melee hit? That works. Rampage times three on melee hits? That's not happening. In Season 17, melee damage is going to be increased by 25% against PvE enemies, but not bosses or vehicles. Shield drain speed has been reduced by 30%, drain slower, and projectile speed has been increased based on your range stat. At zero range, it'll be 60 meters per second, which is double from where it is right now. At max range, it'll be 100 meters per second, up from 80. The exotic glaives are also now buffed. The Titan Bubble will give Void Overshield, and Helm of Saint-14 will work for enemies in this bubble. The Warlock Healing Turret Orbs move a lot faster, and the Hunter Glaive had the damage of the Wave Detonation tripled, and the amount of enemies that it could hit doubled from four to eight. We're gonna talk notes first, thoughts at the end, it's all marked in the timeline, you get it. Let's talk Flinch Resistance next. Bungie continues to push the build crafting narrative farther along as stability is now going to grant flinch resistance ranging from a maximum of 10 to 25 percent based on the archetype of the weapon. For example, 100 stability on an auto rifle will get you 25 percent flinch resistance, while 100 stability on a fusion rifle will only get you 10 percent. Low zoom weapons are less affected by flinch, which is why certain weapons are getting more or less of a bonus. You can now actually build for flinch resistance more than just throwing in a couple of mods if you so choose. Resilience is now also going to give flinch resistance. Tier 0 is 0%, tier 10 is 10%, so we can just assume that one tier is 1%. All of these sources stack multiplicatively, so you're not just going to be able to add up a bunch of bonuses to get 100% resistance or anything like that. Eventually, you are going to hit some diminishing returns. There are some examples in the TWAB of how much resistance you can get based on the buffs that you have. You can just read those on your own, or you can pause the screen right here to read them. The next big thing is even more significant. Airborne effectiveness. Bungie is now making the ability to be accurate in the air into its own stat. Bungie wants airborne shenanigans to be less oppressive to grounded players, essentially, and just less oppressive overall. They still want you to be able to do it, but now you actually need to build for it. All primaries had their accuracy penalty from being in the air removed, and a new stat has been added, airborne effectiveness, which is deliberately tuned on all exotics, everything in Season 16, and everything from Season 17 onward. Certain weapons also get a hand-tuned stat, like Nightfall and Trials weapons, whereas all other guns have just a generic AE stat based on their archetype. In Season 17, this will be a hidden stat, like Aim Assist and Recoil, but in Season 18, several previously hidden stats will be visible in-game in the weapon screen. So what does this mean in English? I'm going to spare you from phrases like aim assist cone penalty angles and precision angle threshold because it just melts everyone's brains, including my own. 
All you gotta know is that the more you build into airborne effectiveness, the easier of a time you're going to have shooting at people while you're in the air, especially in the head, because of aim assist. That's the main thing they seem to be hitting, is aim assist while in the air. The less AE you have, the less aim assist you're going to have in the air. You're going to get fewer misses due to randomness from the accuracy cone while in the air, but precision aiming is more important than ever. In terms of aim assist, if you have zero airborne effectiveness, you will literally get zero aim assist and you must be perfectly accurate to get headshots. Previously, players would get full aim assistance for headshots provided the aim assist cone overlapped the head at all. In English, that means as long as you were kinda accurate, big aim assist. Now, not so much. Shotguns will be affected by this in the following way. Plus 25% spread at zero stat, plus 0% spread with 100 stat. So the lower your airborne effectiveness, the wider the pellet spread. Hunters, you might wanna brace yourselves. The airborne effectiveness stat comes from three sources, weapons, subclasses, and exotics. On the weapon, you're gonna have your base stat, your perks, and Icarus Grip. Let's start easy. Icarus Grip is plus 15 airborne effectiveness. The Adept version is also plus 15, but it gives plus five handling. You throw that into the gun, that's it. Base effectiveness is just how good the weapon is in the air based on its archetype. Weapons have zero to 10, and zero to 30 ranges of effectiveness, depending on the weapon. The full breakdowns in the TWAB itself, along with examples of specific exotics and legendaries. If I try to list them all, I'm going to break down, so just check the website or pause the video. Notable one includes the Chaperone with an airborne effectiveness stat of one. One effectiveness unit, just one. On subclasses, Warlock's Heat Rises will give you plus 70. Tempered Metal for Titan and Whisper of Hedron's Stasis Fragment will give you plus 20 after a solar weapon kill or after freezing a target. You can take a guess at which is which. Then we have exotics. You get stuff like Lion Rampant. That's plus 50 while hip firing only in the air. Peacekeepers, you got plus 40 with SMGs. Lucky Pants, plus 20 for hand cannons after readying a hand cannon. Bunch of other things on the screen as well. You might be noticing that Stompies get a minus 50. It seems that Bungie is finally doing something about Stompies, where if you now want to have the ability to do all of your movement mechanics and your sliding and your jumps, you are going to lose airborne effectiveness as a result and now must pick one or heavily spec into airborne effectiveness in order to counter the negative 50. However, given how large this penalty is, it seems like you will either need to spec into airborne effectiveness to even get back into the positive, meaning your choice is now either movement or airborne effectiveness, no longer both. Bungie also gives us a breakdown of the popularity of every exotic in PvP. Stompies and Ophidians are so popular that you can actually see the text in the graph. Titans don't have a clear winner though. The list is alphabetical, uh, but some of the exotics got cut off in the screenshot. Hopefully they uh, can get new screenshots, but I doubt it. Next up, tier one damage bonuses. Stuff like Empowering Rift, High Energy Fire, Inertia Override are getting nerfed from 20% to 15% against players. This is being done to reduce the amount of one-hit kills from weapons like the Monarch or a high-impact sniper while a Warlock sits in an empowering rift or a Titan sitting in Sunspot. Yeah, you're so annoying that you got nerfed. You know who you are. Also, Bungie has given up on trying to balance scavenger mods in PvP and are throwing in the towel. Scavenger mods are disabled in PvP. Honestly, probably the right move for what they're going for. When you pick up a brick, you will get one shot, no matter what, unless it's for a gun that requires multiple shots to kill, then you'll get a little bit more. End of an era here, end of an era. Next up, we have minor adjustments to almost every archetype in the game. However, I'm gonna try to give the cliff notes here because a lot of these changes are minute or basically speak a different language. Again, sparing you from phrases like reduced recoil scalar variance because it makes people's eyes roll into the back of their heads. Let's start with special weapons. All specials have had their in-air accuracy significantly reduced. Bungie is okay with primaries being good in the air, 
not so much specials, and they don't want a ton of mid-air special weapon one-shot killing in PvP. Snipers. All snipers are going to feel a bit faster. Stow, ready, and ADS times were reduced by 10%. Shotguns. Range nerf for shotguns by about half a meter on average, along with a small aim assist nerf. Bungie is still trying to rein in shotguns as they are still overwhelmingly dominant and the most popular choice. Fusions. There are a lot of notes here, but basically what all of this comes down to is fusion rifles are getting a slight range nerf along with a slight recoil penalty depending on the range or stability stat of the weapon. This is being done because fusions are likely to become a bit more popular due to the more shotgun nerfs, and Bungie is trying to get ahead of things. 20 plus meter fusion kills should be less common. In Season 15, they did some balancing to the different archetypes, but now Bungie is going to be reining in some of those extremes a little bit. High impact charge time was reduced from 1 second to 0.96 seconds, and rapid and precision fusions had their charge times increased by the same amount, 4 one hundredths of a second. High impacts have had their damage increased per burst by 10, which I believe is 2 per pellet, which is a more significant change than people are initially going to realize for PvP. Rapid fires have had their damage per burst reduced by 20, so it's about 2 per pellet. Trace rifles. No one uses them in high-end content besides Divinity, and we all know why Divinity gets used. Trace rifle damage versus non-red bar targets increased by 20%. Ammo per special brick increased from 18 to 30%. Auto rifles got the slightest of range buffs to make them more effective at mid-range. Pulse rifles got a range buff as well, slight. And 450 RPMs got a buff in that the number of crits required to kill someone in PvP was reduced, but the optimal time to kill is the same. Damage per bullet is going from 15 to 16 on them, which increases their precision damage from 24.75 to 26.4, which, again, it's just slight PvP buff. You don't need as many crits to kill. SMGs. Zoom is too important for them, and low zoom SMGs don't feel good in PvP. Variance in zoom values has been reduced. Most SMGs seem to have zoom ranges of 14 to 16, depending on scope selection. This will also nerf Multimock to a slight degree. It shouldn't outclass every SMG in PvP now. Adaptive SMG body shot damage has been nerfed from 12 to 11.25 with their precision multiplier going from 1.35 to 1.44, which makes it so you need one more body shot kill to kill with an adaptive SMG. Precision frame hand cannons now have plus 25 airborne effectiveness intrinsically instead of the plus 75% airborne penalty reduction that they previously had. This is essentially a translation of this intrinsic buff into the new airborne effectiveness system. Machine guns got their PVE damage increased by not 10, not 20, not 30, but by 40%. Praise the Traveler, or don't, based on recent events, whatever you're into, 20% versus bosses. However, Xeno and Grand Overture do not get the bonus damage versus bosses. That being said, Xenophage's previous RPM nerf is now being reverted. It is going back to 120 RPM. Big reversal there. Damage per bullet reduced to match the previous damage. Sword stats have been inconsistent for a little while. Those got patched up. That's mostly a cosmetic fix. No big changes there. Rocket subfamilies weren't made different enough by the previous change. The differences are now more extreme. Precision rockets now have minus 10% damage, both impact and the explosion. High impacts have no change, and adaptive and aggressive rockets now get plus 10% damage. Precisions have the built-in tracking. That's the trade-off that you're making. This means that Palmyra, Ascendancy, and Royal Entry are basically getting a 10% damage nerf because of their built-in tracking. Other ones too, but those are the most popular. Then we got Exotics. Fighting Lion. Reverted the Season 15 Breach GL Blast Radius Reduction only on Fighting Lion, and it got a 5% damage boost. Eyes of Tomorrow. 30% damage buff against bosses and champions. Love it. Leviathan's Breath. Archer's Tempo from the Catalyst now has an increased effect specifically on Leviathan's Breath because it didn't really feel like it was doing a whole lot. It is also getting a change to allow damage from the shot to damage champions properly. 
added a small delay before detonation on champions, mini bosses, and bosses, which allows the impact to stun a champion and the detonation to deal bonus damage against stunned champions. Love it. Damage changed to be a more even split between impact and detonation and increased damage by 50%. Overall damage versus champions is about doubled. Love it. The Huckster, Huckleberry. Zoom stats going from 13 to 15. The Monarch, poison tick damage against players reduced by 25%, but increased against AI by 50% because Bungie thinks it could be a little stronger in PVE. Okay then, poison damage type has been switched from a burn to a poison. I think mostly everyone's gonna be fine with this, including the PVE buff, I'll gladly take that. No one likes being one hit killed by primaries, uh, unless it's Hawkmoon, I guess. I mean, I wouldn't like that either, but I would at least respect it. You know, I respect the Hawkmoon one shot. Anyway, Lawrence Driver. It is difficult to fight against Lawrence Driver because of its very high body shot damage. So, body shot damage versus players reduced by 20%. Precision damage has been unchanged. Body shot damage reverts to its old behavior when you have the damage buff active is what I believe they're trying to say here. Skyburn's Oath. The aim down sights projectiles are now hit scan. Both modes are 150 RPM. The hip fire projectiles do not track anymore, but they are similar to a grenade launcher and have a larger detonation size than aiming down sights. The hip fire also applies a burn to targets and it has the best airborne effectiveness stat on any weapon in the game at base value at 35. Big glow up for sky burners. Let's see if anyone swaps to it. Last word got its recoil penalty reduced from 33% to 22% on mouse and keyboard. Looking forward to getting last worded in the face again. Jokes, I'm actually not. Arbalest, here it comes. 25% reduced damage versus champions, but it'll still break barriers in one hit. If you did not see an Arbalest nerf coming, I do not know what to tell you. Bungie also says they may need to look at Arbalest again in future seasons. You don't say. Graviton Lance, they changed the catalyst from Hidden Hand to Vorpal Weapon and Turnabout. I don't know anyone who's gonna be mad about that. Grand Overture, sometimes you just wanna let the shots fly. So holding the trigger will now fire all the missiles in a continuous burst, while tapping fires the five shot bursts. Cold Heart, Prometheus Lens, and Wave Splitter are all getting tuned. Cold Heart is getting a pretty nice buff. The grace period before the damage ramp falls off is now one second. It used to be 0.113 seconds. That's what, a nine times increase in duration? I think people are gonna sleep on that. And sustained damage will make an ionic trace, which when collected gives you ability energy for all your abilities. Prometheus Lens, sustained damage now applies a more useful burn to targets. And Wave Splitter's power cycling mechanic was neat, but there wasn't really a super strong way to capitalize on it. The power level is not going to randomly cycle anymore. The default damage is the same as the old middle tier power. Picking up an orb now gives 10 seconds of max power, capping at 20 seconds, up from five and 10 respectively. And it now suppresses targets while in this mode when you pick up an orb. All right, nice, nice. Lord of Wolves, it's a shotgun, but it also isn't and it needed its own custom tuning to match the shotgun nerfs. Reduced damage fall off start and end by 25%. Perks, snapshot has been made slower for special weapons. Primary ammo weapons are unchanged. Snipers should feel unchanged, but snipers without snapshot should feel better. Opening shot has felt mandatory on shotties because of what it does. They are nerfing it so that you can't really use shotguns to kill outside of their intended ranges with opening shot. Full choke, slight nerf, smoothbore, slight buff. Desperado, they wanna put this perk on more stuff and not break PVP. They removed the PVE damage penalty, but reduced the duration from seven to six seconds and made it so it doesn't fire as quickly with the perk active. Air assault was garbage, but now with the new airborne changes, it's back. And it's also actually back in the game. Plus 60 airborne effectiveness when wounded, which is the same trigger as Eye of the Storm. Mulligan is getting buffed. It's now a 35% chance to restore ammo up from 20% on primaries only, unchanged on special and heavy weapons. Compulsive Reloader, bit weak. It's getting buffed a little bit to let you really feel it now. Adagio was allowing for one-shot body shot kills with slug shotguns. That will be happening no longer. Reduced damage bonus on shotties from 30 to 20%. 
some ability sandbox tuning, mostly linked to PvP grievances. Axion Bolt base cooldown is now 2.5 minutes. It used to be 1.5 minutes. Titan Barricade base cooldown when you have Bastion equipped is now 82 seconds, up from 53. This matches Warlock Rift. Offensive Bulwark gives 60% less bonus grenade energy in PvP now. Whisper of Chains now only gives 15% bonus damage reduction against players instead of 25% when near a Stasis Crystal. Renewal Grasps, while equipped, base cooldown of Duskfield is now 2.5 minutes. It used to be one minute, and the outgoing damage penalty applied to players in a Duskfield has been reduced from 50 to 20%. This is unchanged in PvE. One more important thing before we go to my thoughts. There are a bunch of guns leaving the loot pool at the start of Season 17 and the start of Season 18. Notables leaving at the start of Season 17 are The Messenger and Shiura's Wrath from Trials and The Palindrome from Nightfalls. Oh my god, that's it. Oh my god. So obviously the highlights of this update are flinch resistance, airborne effectiveness, Stompy's nerf, machine gun buff, arbalist nerf, Scavenger nerf, bunch of PvP sandbox changes. Uh, oh, Glaives. Yeah, what about Glaives? Yeah, Glaives. So I like the Glaive buffs, especially to the exotics. They could probably use a smidge more, but I will take this for now on top of the other buffs that they're getting. I'm a little sad that stuff like Swashbuckler is not going to apply to Glaive melees, but with the flat damage buff, I think it's acceptable for now, at least on paper, and then we can reevaluate. Bungie's intents that they listed for Glaive melees is, it's fine. Glaives just need a little more juice. I'm not sure how much it'll end up doing for them in the end game, but like I mentioned in my video, not everything is built for everything, he says, believing that a Glaive is actually very good in the master raid during season 16. Again, when the mods go away, that's going to be the biggest test for Glaives in my eyes. Flint resistance, I think, is a neat little mechanic, finally making stability worth something on PC, and it makes resilience a little more valuable in PvP, although I don't think a lot of people are going to spec into 10 resilience anytime soon because it's something that's way too difficult to actually feel in the moment. But with the new changes, especially if you're going balls out and just trying to get full resistance, I wouldn't question it. Also, the reveal of the hidden stats into the game in Season 18 is going to be very nice. I know that they were hidden because Bungie hasn't wanted to confuse players with all these different numbers and stats and always wanted people to choose guns based on how they feel, but I love that we can actually see these stats in-game now, or will be able to. I'm glad they're loosening this policy. You can also get some ridiculously high flinch resistance if you build for it. If you want to build for it, I think you should be able to, so good for you. The biggest thing is the airborne effectiveness mechanic, making it so everything technically works in the air, but to get a lot of that aim assist back, you need to spec for it. That is something I feel is going to be missed by people, is that this change is actually more targeted at aim assist rather than gameplay in the air. We're so used to aim assist being such a large factor, but if you're actually able to land accurate shots, if you're an accurate shooter, you might not need as much of this new stat to be competitive. It rewards highly accurate shooting instead of just being in the air as much as humanly possible because you got so much aim assist simply for being in the air and simply for aiming somewhere close to someone's head. Hunters are probably mad about stompies, I get it, but it's not like your air effectiveness value can go into the negative. The lowest it goes is zero. So you can keep using stompies, you just need to be a lot better with your shooting instead of just always constantly being in the air. Shotguns also got hit a little bit as well, but Bungie doesn't want a lot of one-hit kills with specials mid-air anymore. What I do think this change will do is give many players a big reality check. And that definitely goes for me. I will likely spec somewhat high into this stat when possible because I know a lot of my shots that you might see in my highlights are driven by aim assist. I hope people are clipping oh, these yeah. shots. I'm going to do a quick little montage in the next highlight reel. If I get a triple kill, we're all getting... Oh. I regularly yeet myself into the air to go for dumb sniper shots. So I have a good amount of experience with airborne effectiveness. But a lot of people who thought they were nice with it are maybe not as nice with it 
as they previously imagined and may be relying on aim assist for a lot of that. Again, self-included. Ultimately, this is yet another, I need to see how it plays kind of change before I'm willing to come to a conclusion, but it doesn't seem as crazy of a thing as it might appear when you first read it. Machine gun PVE boost, fantastic. Perhaps a little too fantastic, we'll see. Xeno got its RPM nerf reverted. Ton of people are gonna be very, very stoked about that. Excited for all of you. Eyes of Tomorrow with a nice buff. We'll see how much that ends up doing for the weapon. Hopefully we can start to see it shine a little bit. Le Monarch nerf in PVP. Yeah, that was definitely getting annoying with people just abusing rifts and whatnot. Titan sunspots with uh, the new helm. I saw people one-shotting with Ariana's Vow and Sunspots, and that made me not want to even touch PvP for another three months, although I did play a bunch of Iron Banner recently, and I wasn't seeing a whole lot of that, so maybe the appeal is wearing off or people just not doing it anymore. And if Sunspot is also getting this nerf, then, you know, you're you're not going to see it either. Arblest getting nerfed. Again, if you didn't see this coming, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. It was a way better version of Ariana's Vow. Great damage, utility, anti-champion, everything. It's still going to one-shot anti-barrier shields, which means it's still going to be used. It's still a fantastic option in the slot. It's not going anywhere. Remember, this damage nerf is only against champions. It's not against bosses. It's not against majors. It's just champions. It's still going to be nuts. Bungie throwing in the towel with the scavenger mods I found funny, but, you know, it, it's like they, they've tried everything. They've tried everything. Nerf, nerf, nerf. Still couldn't make it work. I think it's totally fine that they just threw in the towel. They said, no more. Let's just go nuclear with it. No more mods. I do worry this will leave PvP a little low in special weapon usage. But I also feel like I and other people have been saying that since the beginning of time. Every single time that they've nerfed it and nothing has really happened. So this is the ultimate test. We'll, we'll see. I'll definitely miss having a lot of special ammo access all the time, but I understand. I completely understand. The Trace Rifle buffs. I think people might sleep on. They're going to be very strong. They're very strong right now, and this buff is just going to push them even farther. But without a champion mod, I still am not sure how much they're going to get used in endgame. They just tear through ammo so quickly. They need so much of it to be successful. It's just an issue of them being a primary style weapon using special ammo. I could talk about them all day. I'm going to spare you. Wave Splitter. Watch out for Wave Splitter. Don't, sl don't sleep on Wave Splitter. You can do some, some neat stuff with that. Don't sleep on it. Otherwise, there wasn't really much else here that had me questioning why said things were happening. Most of the other things seemed pretty fine. Shotgun, slight nerf. I Yeah, totally understand that. Auto Rifle, slight buff. T totally understand that. That's fine. Nerfing one-shot kills in PvP. Totally understand that. Not many people upset about that. A lot of these changes are small, and the average day-to-day -day player might not even notice a difference, which is why I tried to make this video go a little bit faster. Uh, but nothing stood out egregiously, and I was like, oh my god, why? What? Why? So, yeah, that's your TWAB. Talk about it in the comments, but as usual for sandbox-related things, need to see how things play out. Thank you very much for watching. I'm out.